In today's lesson, we are going to be reviewing quadratics. So we will be covering this in some of the lessons that we do in our first unit, um, but we're just gonna kind of do a quick overview of some of the stuff that you should have learned last year. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't, maybe you forget it, uh, maybe you remember it. Um, but again, all right, the goal is to kind of just review some of the concepts that we are gonna be using going forward. So the goals for this class, right? So again, we are still in our first kind of first couple days of the course, right? The goal is just to make you feel okay walking into class, right? Not saying that you're gonna like math, um, not saying that you have to like math, right? But as long as you're comfortable coming to class, asking for help, um, then that is what our goal is, right? We're in this course, so the goal is to basically earn our credit um, and move on to grade 12, right? Hopefully you do earn or gain some enjoyment out of this or learn something new or something enjoyable or something useful. Um, but um, again, our goal is to just kind of progress further so that we can better prepare ourselves for grade um, 12 and then post-secondary. So the first thing we want to do is factor fully, right? So in grade 10, we learned how to factor, right? Factor was the opposite of multiplying. So we want to factor these different polynomials, right, or quadratics. In the first one, x squared minus 12x plus 36, right, this looks like a simple trinomial, right, and a simple trinomial, right, we are finding two numbers that give us a product or two numbers that multiply to our last value, or 36, but they have to add or give us a sum that add the middle number. So they have to multiply to this last number, but add to this middle number. Maybe this one see a little bit better. So what two numbers multiply to 36, but add to negative 12? We get negative six and negative six. So negative six times negative six is um, 36, and negative six plus negative six is negative 12. So once we have those two values, we can create two brackets or our two factors, one will be x coming from this first term. So x minus six times x minus six. And because it's the same bracket multiplied by itself, we can actually say it's just x minus six squared. Now, because it is squared, you might recognize this as a perfect square trinomial. So you could have factored this a different way and we will look at that um, in another example as well. Um, or, you could have multi or you could have factored it as a simple trinomial, still the same idea. Um, it's just sometimes a little bit quicker if we know some of the patterns to look for. And for example, the next one, 9x squared minus 25, right? We see this as a difference of squares. And the reason we see it as a difference of squares, if we remember, there are two terms, one, two, each term is a perfect square. If I take the square root of nine X squared, I get three X. If I take the square root of 25, I get five, and they are separated by a subtraction. So that tells me this is a difference of squares. So to factor a difference of squares, the pattern is we get the square root of the first term, the square root of the second term, we repeat that in another bracket, and we have opposite signs in each of them. So one's a minus and one's a plus. So 9x squared minus 25 becomes 3x minus 5 times 3x plus 5. The last, in this third example, right, 2x squared plus 20x plus 32, this looks like a... Um, a complex trinomial because we have a value in front of the x. However, there is something else that we can do, right? We can common factor this. I can actually common factor out a two from this entire thing because each number or each coefficient is divisible by two. So if I factor out a two, I get two and then in brackets, x squared plus 10x plus 16. And now inside the bracket is a simple trinomial. So I can go through and try to factor this. 
I'm looking for two numbers that add to 10 and the same two numbers have to multiply to 16. So what two numbers add to 10, but multiply to 16? If you think about it, think of our factors, focus specifically on the numbers that multiply to 16, because there are fewer of those, we should find two and eight. So that means we keep our two on the outside and this trinomial, we split up into two factors, x plus two, x plus eight. Just using the two values that we found that satisfy adding to the middle number and multiplying to the last number. The next one, 4x squared plus 5x minus 6. This one is a complex trinomial because again, we have a value in front of the x squared. We can't common factor anything out to make it a, a simple trinomial. So we have to solve this as a complex trinomial. And in this case, when it's a complex trinomial, we're still trying to find two numbers that add to the middle number but we're also looking for two number, the same two numbers have to multiply to what four times negative six is. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 24, but add to five. If we think about it, again, focus on the numbers that multiply to negative 24, we should find we have eight and negative three. So those are the two numbers that we find. Now, now that we found those two numbers, because it is a complex trinomial, we have to factor it slightly differently. So what we have to do is break apart the middle number. So we have four X squared. And instead of five X, we're gonna have plus eight X minus three X. So basically just splitting apart that middle term into the two factors and our minus six. We are then going to factor or by grouping. So we're gonna group the first two numbers and the second two numbers, and I'm gonna common factor each. So in the first one, I can see that I have a four X that is common. I'm left with X plus two. Now my goal for factoring the second two numbers or the second pair is to get the same bracket. So what can I factor out? Well, I can see that I can factor out a three. So if I was ordered doing that, I would get X minus two or negative X minus two. I want positive X plus two. So I need to factor out one extra thing. I need to factor out a negative. I need to factor out a negative three, not a positive three. And so our goal is to get the same bracket in both terms. Because then what I can do is I can factor by grouping, right? Or, um, or I can factor or common factor these two, and I can common factor out the entire bracket of x plus two, and the remainder, the four x minus three, is the second bracket. And that's factoring a complex trinomial. The next one is going to be a similar idea. It's a complex trinomial just by looking at it because again, we have a value in front of the X squared. I can't common factor anything out. It's not a perfect square trinomial. So I have to factor it as a complex trinomial. So again, I'm looking for two numbers that add to negative five and multiply to the product of 12 times negative three. So again, adding to negative five, but multiplying to negative 36. In this case, we get negative nine and four. So again, I just know these just from knowing our times tables. So knowing our time tables will help make it a little bit quicker. So once I have the two numbers, I split up the middle number into both those two. So instead of minus five X, I have minus nine X plus four X, then minus three. Next, I'm going to factor by grouping. And I'm going to common factor each group. So we can take out a 3x and a 
first one and get 4x, wait, not 4x squared, just 4x minus 3. And in our second term, we can't take anything out, or we don't need to take anything out to get the same bracket, because I'm just going to have a plus 4x minus 3. So in, what I've actually done is I've taken out a factor of 1, so to speak. I can then comment, I can then factor the bracket out, 4x minus 3, and the remainder 3x plus 1 is left over. So that is my factored form. Lastly, it looks like we have a complex trinomial, because again, the value in front of the x squared, this is actually a perfect square trinomial. And the reason I can tell is because the first value, 16x squared, is a perfect square, 4x. The last value is a perfect square, it gives us 2. And the middle value, 16, is the two values, so 4x times 2, and then doubled, give me 16x. So if I take the two values, so the two perfect squares, multiply them together, and then double them, I should get the middle value, which we do. And then go through then and common factor this, or not factor it, factor it using the pattern. This becomes 4x minus 2 squared. The minus comes from the sign between the first and the second term. These two values here just come from the, the square root of the first and the last term. I could look at this as well and think, oh, I have one other thing that I could factor out. Right? I could factor out a 2. Actually, this one's a little bit. I could factor out a 2. However, we have to think 4x minus 2, 4x minus 2. In each one, I could factor out a value of 2 x minus 1 times 2 times 2x minus 1. We end up with 4 times 2x minus 1 squared. So just kind of did some rearranging and simplifying. Now, realistically, with this one, it would have been easier to recognize that I could have factored out or common factored a 4 out first and then went through and factored it as a perfect square trinomial. But either way, we can get to that same value in the end, or the same factored version in the end. So with quadratics, there are three different forms um, of the quadratic equation. Right? So in our factored form, the general format, if we remember y equals a x minus r times x minus s, that's our factored form. And the nice thing about the factored form is it tells us or it tells the zeros, or basically the roots, or the x-intercepts. So this factored form tells us the x-intercepts. Right, so for example, if I had y equals x plus 3 times x minus 5, my two x-intercepts would be negative 3, 0, and positive 5, 0. Right, so just the opposite value that we see in our equation. So that is the main thing from our factor form. We also have the a value, right? A value tell, or coefficient tells us the step pattern. It tells us um, whether it opens up or down, which we'll talk a little bit about later. But the main thing in the factor form is that it tells us the x-intercepts. Now, the next one is standard form. And these, all of these formulas are, um, or versions of the equation are connected. So I can actually go from the factored form to the standard form by foiling. Right? Foiling was when we multiplied the binomial, right? first outside, inside, last, multiplying the two brackets. If I foil or expand, I will get the standard form, which is y equals ax squared plus bx 
plus C. This one doesn't tell us too much. Um, it does tell us the coefficient um, and it does tell us the Y intercept, which is the C value. So it does tell us the Y intercept. It does tell us the step pattern and whether it opens up or down. We could get to derive some more information from it, um, but it's not too useful, right? Realistically, if we're trying to graph this or look for key information right away, we'd probably rather it in either vertex or factored form. From standard form, we can get to our vertex form by going through a process called completing the square. Right, so you may have heard that before. Hopefully it might be a little bit familiar, but we can complete the square to get our vertex form. And our vertex form would be in the form y equals a x minus h squared plus k. So that's our vertex form. And it does tell us some more useful things. The h and the k tells us our vertex. Right, so we get to see our vertex, which is our maximum or minimum. We still have the step pattern. Right, so for example, let's say we had y equals 2x plus 5 squared minus 7. The vertex would be negative 5, negative 7. Right, again, we take the opposite of what we see in the brackets. So this is just an overview of all the different uh, types of um, quadratic equations that we may come across. Looking next at a quadratic graph, we want to be able to identify some of the key pieces of information. Right? First is our vertex, and our vertex is um, the maximum or minimum, the point of inflection where it starts to change. So here we see our graph start to go up and then at the vertex right after it starts to go back down. So that vertex is that inflection point where it changes, right? Or that highest or lowest value. So in this case, our vertex would be negative three, four, right? So it's that point. The zeros, the x-intercepts, where does it cross the x-axis? Again, remember x is horizontal, y is vertical. So our x-intercepts here are negative five and zero and negative one and zero. The axis of symmetry, the axis of symmetry is a vertical line that divides our parabola in half. Right? Remember the shape, the U shape is called a parabola or the quadratic shape is a parabola parabola, however you want to pronounce it. And the axis of symmetry is the line that divides it in the middle. So we have this vertical line here. Vertical line would be x equals negative 3, which is the x value that it goes through, or the x value of our vertex. Direction of the opening. Direction of the opening, in this case it's opening down. Right, we can see our line, our parabola goes in this direction. It opens down. The opening is down here, so it opens down. The y-intercept, again, where it crosses the y-axis, we can see over here where it touches. So the y-intercept is 0, negative 5. And the step pattern, the step pattern is what it changes by. So we start at the vertex, and the step pattern goes... We always go over left or right one, one unit. And then we go and see how far down or up do we have to go till we hit our, our graph, our parabola. So in this case, we had to go down one. So our first step was down one. Our next step, we start at this new point, we go over one again, and we're gonna go down one, two, three, till we hit our graph. So that means our next step is negative three. We have our new point now, we go over one again, and we go down until we hit our graph. So we've gone down five. So my step pattern is negative one, negative three, negative five. This is important 
because the general pattern for a step pattern is 1a, 3a, 5a, with a being the value of the coefficient. So in this case, right, as long as we know the first step from the vertex, we can figure out our a value. And with the vertex and the zeros, we can actually come up with two different equations for this parabola, right? Our vertex form, so y equals negative 1 from the step, x plus 3, because it's the opposite of what we see, squared plus 4. That's one version. The other version, y equals negative 1 for the a, x plus 5 and x plus 1 for the factored form. If we wanted the standard form, we can multiply this factored form, expand it to get the vertex form, or sorry, to get the standard form. But based on just the graph, what we see, these two we can easily determine from it. Same idea kind of similar idea with this one. Given the equation now, we want to come up with those different uh, pieces of information and graph it. So in this case, we have 3, which is our a value, plus 2, which is our h, and negative 5, which is our k. So that means our vertex is going to be negative 2, negative 5, our zeros, um, we don't know right off the top right, right now. Our equation for the axis of symmetry, this will be x equals 2, or oh yeah, 2, or negative 2, right? the x value from our vertex. The direction of the opening will be up because our a value is positive. The y-intercept, we don't know. And the step pattern, again, the general form is 1a, 3a, 5a. I know my step or my a value is 3, so I know the first step is going to be 3, or 1 times 3, 3 times 3, 5 times 3, or 3, 9, 15. With that information, let me go and graph it as much as I can. So negative 2, negative 5. There's my vertex. I know it's going to open up. Right? If we want, we can draw our, um, our axis of symmetry. That means on either side of this imaginary line, it is going to be identical. I can use my step pattern to help me find my other points because I can go over 1 up three. That's going to be a new point on my quadratic. I can then continue the next one, go over one, up nine. In this case, I don't have enough to reach it. Right? It is just slightly beyond up here. So I could go through and graph this as best as possible. I can at least graph the one side and I can repeat the step on the other side or identical points on the other side. Let me move this above. And I can connect the dots on the other side. And there we roughly have it. Um, so I can look and say, okay, roughly my zeros will be approximately Right, one negative one point, or sorry, not negative one, neg negative zero point eight, and approximately negative three point two five. Right again, I'm just approximating based on what my graph looks like. Um, mathematically, I could go through expand this, use a quadratic formula, stuff like that. Um, but we'll talk about that in a later lesson. Y-intercept, Y-intercept I don't have right off the bat, but what I could do is I could plug in X equals zero into my equation. 
So three times zero plus two squared minus five. Three times four is 12. Um, three times four is 12 minus five is seven. Right, so that means that my y-intercept is zero seven, right? So I would have, which we would see over here where it would touch. Right, this would be our y-intercept technically. So that is graphically what it looks like with all kind of the key information. Keep in mind our zeros are approximated. Lastly is completing the square. So we talked about how this is the process from going from standard form to vertex form. If we want to complete the square, um, right, this is one of the kind of um, one of the skills that you might have learned in grade 10. Hopefully you did or you might or if you did, maybe hopefully you didn't forget it. So completing the square, what we want to do, we want to focus on the two values here. And what we want to do first is we basically we want to make a perfect square trinomial with these two values. So we need to figure out or add what we call or at least what I've called a magic number. And what we do is we take our B value, right, which is the value with the X. So we take that value 24, we divide it by two, and then we square it. So essentially, we're taking that perfect square trinomial pattern and reversing it to get um, what our last value would have to be. So we take 24 divided by two and square it, 24 divided by 2 is 12. 12 squared is 144. So that is going to be our magic number. I'm just move this off to the side. So with that magic number, we are going to add it and subtract it after this value. So we have and y equals x squared plus 24x plus 12, or sorry, plus 144, minus 144, and minus 32. Essentially, we kind of put brackets around this to keep it isolated. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to move this minus 134 outside of the bracket. And in this case, nothing is going to happen. We don't, we haven't common factored, um, so it makes it really easy. So we get x squared plus 24x plus 144, minus 144, minus 32 outside the bracket. The reason we added and subtracted is because technically if I add and subtract the same value, I haven't changed anything, right? I add a number, subtract the same number, technically they cancel each other out. So we move the, the minus outside the bracket Inside the bracket now becomes that perfect square trinomial, x plus 12 squared. So the sign, the 12, comes from the value between the first two, and the value at the end comes from our magic number. And I can subtract the two values on the outside. So the minus 144 minus 32 minus 176. So that is how we complete the square. And now we have, now we have our vertex form y equals x, oops, that's, that's a millimeter, x plus 12 squared minus 176. So we could get our a value, we could get our vertex, right? Um, we can work from there. The next one, is a little bit different. Actually, let me, before I get into that, I'm just going to color code this slightly different just so we know. Um, where we're getting some of these values from just so when we look back at these, it's a little bit easier. So with our next one, this one is a little bit different. Right? This one is different because we have the value in front of the um, the x squared. Now, it's not really going to change, it's only going to add, or it is going to change slightly, we're going to add kind of two things. So first, I'm going to put brackets around the first two terms, which I kind of failed to do. I 
but, but the last one, but didn't really affect it overall. So I put brackets around the first two terms. I'm going to common factor the first bracket or the, the bracket to get a value or to remove the value in front of the x squared. So I'm going to common factor out a negative 2. That leaves me with x squared minus 4x. Close the bracket and we still have minus 13. Now, now I'm going to come up with my magic number to complete the square to help create, make this bracket here a perfect square trinomial. So this is where we have to come up with our magic number. So we take four, or you could say technically negative four, negative, oops, negative four divided by two, and then we square it. We get negative two squared, which is four. So that's our magic number. So that means then that we have to add and subtract that value. So we have negative 12, x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 4. Close the brackets, minus 13. So we have one extra step, right? That common factoring, the second part's the same. We do have to move that minus term out. However, when we move it out of the bracket, we still have to apply this common factor. What that means is when I move that minus four out, I have to multiply it by that common factor. So negative two x squared minus four x plus four, that minus four goes out, it becomes minus four times negative two minus 13. So negative two, let me rewrite things a little, minus 13. negative two, or negative four times negative two. We get negative two is equal to x squared. And now this becomes a perfect square trinomial. So x minus two squared. And we can simplify the ending. So negative 13 plus eight is negative five. Therefore, this equation in vertex form is y equals negative two x minus two squared minus five. And again, we can see it's the vertex form. We can see the vertex. We can see the a value. We can find, we can um, plot more useful information for this quadratic than if we just had the standard version. So again, just a quick overview of the stuff from grade 10. Um, if you want, I do have um, videos on the YouTube channel that focus on the grade 10 course. So if you need reminders or if you need review, please feel free to go back and take a look at those. We will be covering some of this stuff in the first unit anyways, um, but it does make it easier if we have this background knowledge um, or if we remember the stuff we did in grade 10.